Hi there, and welcome back for our continued study of chords up the neck. Today I want to look at what happens when we take the A minor shape and move it up the neck with a bar chord. We've got a couple couple different options here. Um, and as you'll see, because there's just one finger, right, that's involved one string, um, that means I'm going to be barring a lot more of the strings than maybe in the, the previous chord shapes that we've looked at. So what I'm going to do is, again, as I did for the others, take my A minor chord, put my index finger across the, the nut here just to get used to where that's going to be and what is going to happen to my fingers and how I'm going to have to readjust them. I would recommend, because we're going to be barring so many strings, I like to use two fingers on the bar for this shape, and then I reach my ring finger over to play the second fret of that G. And then that's going to be the shape that I move up the neck as I go. And again, I'm going to be checking in with this barring finger for a couple reasons and to make sure of a few things. First, those fingers are straight. I'm not bending at the knuckles and I'm overshooting that fretboard. I want to make sure that my knuckles are actually doing most of the work as opposed to my thumb back here squeezing for dear life, right? I actually, by keeping those nice and straight and engaged, there's a lot that I can do. The thumb just becomes part of the leverage. Again, I don't like to have my thumb directly opposite my index finger. It creates way too much tension in here. I bring it down a little bit to offset and preferably kind of right in between where my barred fingers are going to be and where just my regular chord fingers are going to be. And again, you can decide, do you want to be perpendicular to the neck? Do you want to be parallel to the neck or somewhere in between? Everybody's hand is going to feel a little different, right? Bring it over to the far side, bring it back and perch it back this way. I encourage you to just experiment and see what feels most natural for your hand. I would say there's, there are some wrong ways to do it, and I think your hands will tell you pretty quickly this does not feel good. Um, but by and large, there are many quote-unquote right ways to do it. Again, just feel for what feels natural in your hand and what feels like you can work towards and build muscles for. The chords that I most often use in this shape are this one, B minor. Um, so I have my bar across the second fret and my ring fingers on the fourth fret of G. This is really nice for a few different keys. When I'm playing the uh, 50s progression or the pop progression in the key of D, B minor becomes really helpful. B minor is that minor six. So for example, if I'm playing the 50s progression, it's going to be D to B minor to G to A or A7 right? Or if I make it the pop progression, those are the same chords in a different sequence here. D to A to B minor to G. Now I can play four chord songs in the key of D once I kind of master that B minor chord there. Um, the other one that I'll use it in and offer a song example is in the key of C. Uh, I can go up to the fifth and seventh fret to make a D minor chord up to the 7th and the ninth for an E minor, back down to D minor, back down to C. And there what's happened is I've, I'm kind of focusing in on this melody line on the A string. Notice when I came down from that E minor to D minor to C, there was this really nice little melodic line from the third note of the scale, E, D, C resolving back to the one. And that's something that bar chords offer us, a different voicing so we can hear different notes from, uh, from that chord that we may not hear otherwise. If I had done it E minor, uh, that's not E minor, E minor to D minor to C, I'm not getting that same step down. It's in there, but it's voiced somewhere else in the strings. It doesn't sound the same as when I hear nice and clear up top. Right? I can pair that with the inverted C chord or just my regular C chord. So again, something you can kind of play around with. Again, here's your A, here's your original A minor. Work it up the neck, B minor. Uh, one that comes up too is C sharp minor. That's going to be your four and six. That comes up in the key of A. Key of A, that's the major, what is that? That's the minor three chord there. Um, then your D and your E minor. So see if you can find some songs with those chords. What does it sound like when you put those bar chords in there instead? 
Um, one last thing, because there is a little bit of jumping there and because there's a big shift in your hand position when you're going, say, to go back to the key of D to your B minor, remember our ready, set, go game. That's going to be my last tip for you with this one. Remember that uh, your ready is chord number one, whatever that is. Set is visualizing on the fretboard where you're going to put your hands, like channeling your inner gymnast, getting ready for that jump. You want to spot yourself and know where you're going to land when you're done with your fancy schmancy move here, which in this case is going to be D to B minor. So ready on D, visualize where I'm going on B minor, on set, and then go. And before you even go through Ready, Set, Go, just be sure you know which finger is moving first. How do I work this into one smooth movement, right? So again, Ready on D, Set, Visualize, and then Go. And again, if you need to, before you even get to Ready, Set, Go, figure out how am I going to get from this shape up to this shape? Am I leading with that ring finger? Am I going to lay the bar down first? Really make sure your fingers know what path they're going to take and then work that back and forth and back and forth with the ready, set, go before you work it into a song. It, it's long and tedious, but I guarantee you, if you put that work in at the front end, it's going to make it so much more automatic uh, when you're bringing things into a chord progression, into a song, up to tempo, all of those things. You really want to lay down these, these tracks here before you get the train going, so to speak. Um, enjoy. I'll have a song for you up next where you can put these, a song or two, I believe, uh, they, where you can put these bar chords um, to use and uh, enjoy your practice. Enjoy having fun with these bar chords. Enjoy your practice.